After almost 80 days of uninterrupted fighting against the Japanese invaders in August of 1937, Generalissima Chiang Kai-shek ordered the retreat of the Chinese National Army from Zhabei and nearby towns to protect the inner suburbs of Shanghai. However, he asked for one battalion of the elite German-trained 88th Chinese Division to remain at the Sihang warehouse to cover the army's retreat and fend off the advancing Japanese troops. While the battalion only had 414 combat-effective soldiers, the Chinese army planners did not want to show any signs of weakness. Following the principles of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, the officers lied and told the media they had 800 men ready to fight to their last breath in one glorious last stand that was so brutal it has since been described as Stalingrad on the Yangtze. Invasion of Manchuria Japanese territorial gains in the Pacific after the end of World War I turned the empire more aggressive after Western powers failed to recognize their race as equal to other European nations. After years of supporting local warlords in China, following the abdication of the last Chinese emperor during the Chinese Civil War, Japan launched a full military invasion of Manchuria in 1931. At the time, China was divided into two main factions, the Kuomintang, or the Nationalists, who sought to unify all of China and put a stop to Japanese expansion, and the Chinese Communist Party, heavily influenced by Stalin and the Soviet Union. The Nationalists were led by Chiang Kai-shek and the Communists by Mao Zedong. Both factions were at war, but made an uneasy alliance to fight off the Japanese invaders. Soon, the Japanese established the puppet state of Manchukuo, which became the anchor point of a future invasion of northern Japan. Nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek then agreed to peace with the empire, while he sought support from the West to better equip his army. As such, the Weimar Republic, later the Third Reich, helped modernize the Chinese army with German advisors and equipment. From Mauser 98 rifles to standard-issue inspired German uniforms, the iconic and battle-tested Stahlhelm and German hand grenades, the Nationalist Army looked and trained like Germans. Machine guns, artillery pieces, aircraft, and German panzers quickly turned it into a small but formidable force, especially the 88th Division, trained by veteran General Alexander von Falkenhausen. Escalating Tensions On July 7, 1937, puzzled Chinese troops stationed at the Marco Polo Bridge, some 30 miles from Beijing, opened fire on Japanese forces conducting an unannounced military training exercise. The Japanese demanded to inspect the town of Wanping, but were denied access. Tensions quickly escalated, and both sides deployed troops to the area. Fierce fighting broke out the following day. For the following weeks, skirmishes intensified in northern China, and on August 9th, Lieutenant Isao Oyama tried to force his way into Hongqiao Airport outside Shanghai. The Chinese guard then took Oyama's life, and the Japanese consul general demanded that all the Chinese forces in Shanghai had to withdraw from the city. However, Chiang Kai-shek refused and tried to negotiate a ceasefire with the angry Japanese. Shanghai, a cultural hub with plenty of American, British, French, and other European citizens, was soon surrounded by both armies for imminent battle. A Desperate Defense The Chinese forces repeatedly established that they would not fire unless fired upon, but it all changed on August 13th, when the Chinese Preservation Corps was attacked by Japanese troops in the Wusong, Xingwan, and Zhabei districts of the city. The German-trained 88th Division responded with accurate motor fire, while Chiang Kai-shek dispatched the Republic of China Air Force to bomb advancing Japanese targets. Meanwhile, the Japanese mobilized their third fleet to attack the city from the coast. During the following days, the Chinese forces attempted to encircle the Japanese headquarters near Zhabei, but were stopped short 
by the superior weaponry and coordination of the Imperial Japanese Army. Fierce close quarters combat erupted, and for a moment, the Chinese were close to pushing back the Japanese to the Huangpu River, who fiercely resisted and made several amphibious landings on August 22nd. The Japanese Marines landed in several towns on the northern coast of Shanghai, lengthening the front line across the Huangpu River. While the Japanese prepared to counterattack, the Chinese Air Force bombed their enemy's flagship, Izumo, which was moored in the Shanghai International Settlement as a human shield because many civilian foreigners lived there. However, several Chinese bombs fell over the settlement, resulting in over 3,000 deceased or wounded. In late August, the Japanese landed more forces in Shanghai to reinforce the garrison, forcing the Chinese troops to withdraw from the coastal towns to prevent unnecessary losses. Entire units were decimated by Japanese naval bombardments, and the lack of high-caliber weapons also prevented the Chinese forces from halting the restless advance of Japanese landing craft and vehicles. Town after town fell under Japanese control. Even so, the nationalists were still hopeful that victory could be achieved by engaging the enemy in close quarters combat, where they had the numerical advantage. Closing in. On September 11th, after the fall of Baoshan City, the defenders moved into position around Luodian, a transportation center town that connected several others with downtown Shanghai. Jiang and von Falkenhausen agreed that Luodian had to be defended at any cost. To achieve this, the Chinese put together up to 300,000 soldiers that would face about 100,000 enemy troops. Despite the sheer numerical superiority, Defending Luodian would prove impossible. The brutal combat between the Chinese and Japanese in the area earned the town the nickname of the Grinding Mill of Flesh and Blood. By the end of September, the town had fallen. And on October 1st, Japanese Prime Minister Fumimaro Kunoe decided to integrate the North and Central China theaters and launch a massive offensive to end the war that same month. The Japanese officials then aimed to cross the Yunzaobang River and take over Dachang, a town that acted as a communications link between troops in downtown Shanghai and the outlying northwest cities. If Dachang fell, the Chinese troops would be forced to leave their downtown and nearby positions to avoid encirclement by the Japanese. A brutal and devastating final battle ensued. Stiff resistance. For almost a month, the Chinese engaged in one final battle. During that time, the fighting was so fierce that some Chinese divisions would become incapacitated in a matter of days. As carnage followed the Chinese soldiers wherever they went, one glimmer of hope immortalized the Battle of Shanghai forever. From October 26th to November 1st, a group of dauntless soldiers from the 88th Division NRA heroically stood their ground defending the Sihang warehouse in the Chape neighborhood of Shanghai. Complete with the Republic of China flag, the group held out against wave after wave of Japanese forces for six long days. Despite the loss of Shanghai, after holding out for almost three months, the bravery shown by the Chinese, particularly the defense of the Sihang warehouse that gave way to the legend of the 800 heroes, caused a morale boost within the fractured nation. Even so, the National Revolutionary Army began a general retreat on November 9th. After the defeated nationalists retreated, Japan effectively gained control over the city, but it came at a high cost. The Japanese, who expected a short battle and swift victory, were shocked at the Chinese defense of the city and did not expect to receive such a blow. With up to 100,000 casualties, according to Chinese accounts, the Japanese losses included some of the empire's most essential and loyal soldiers, and as a result, the Japanese morale drastically fell. With more hatred and feelings of vengeance towards the Chinese than ever, imperial armies advanced towards Nanking, the nationalist capital, on November 11th. Eight Long Years 
The Chinese officials hoped their troops' relentless fighting in Shanghai would set an example of the nation's bravery and resistance in the face of overwhelming firepower. During the initial battles of the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Soviet Union became the main supporter of China's War of Resistance, with a non-aggression pact and a treaty between Soviet Russia and China signed in 1937. The stubborn defense of the Sihang warehouse showed the West what the Chinese army could do at a time when the Allies were more concerned with the situation in Europe. And on November 3rd, while the last Chinese troops fought in Shanghai, the Western powers finally convened in Brussels to discuss a potential intervention. By 1940, President Franklin D. Roosevelt had successfully formalized U.S. aid to China, extending credits to purchase war supplies while slowly tightening restrictions on Japan. In addition to initial help from Germany, China was now fighting with the support of the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States. However, the Battle of Shanghai was only the beginning of a damned war doomed to last eight years. The Second Sino-Japanese War was the largest Asian war in the 20th century, taking place between 1937 and 1945, accounting for most civilian and military casualties in the Pacific theater. Then, after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, the years-long battle between China and Japan merged with other global conflicts. While some scholars consider the European War and the Pacific War to be two separate, albeit concurrent, conflicts, many other experts consider the start of the full-scale Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937 to be the beginning of World War II. Thank you for watching Dark Docs. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed our video. And for more stories about the depths of World War II and beyond, subscribe to this and all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.